Why do I love Resident Evil so much? Honestly, in the first 10 minutes of Resident Evil 4, Leon Kennedy says no to a cigarette because those things will kill ya, then gobbles down a raw snake egg he found in the toilet and front flips through a two-story window. Where's everyone going? Bingo? For me, Resident Evil is B-movie action horror with a triple-A budget and S-tier levels of fun. So the obvious similarities between Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil Village had me super excited. Big mommy release. vampire booby lady step yeah. on me mommy. Ah! Big Big mama. Mommy. However, for many people, such as my boyfriend, Resident Evil is about survival horror. That's what made the series popular in the 90s, and what made it popular again when Capcom returned to form in Resident Evil 7. Oh ah! <laughs> That's why making their eighth installment a direct sequel to Ethan battling Big Buggy Buggina on the bayou, while also making it a spiritual sequel to Leon flashbanging crows for cash, had fans in both camps wondering who was gonna get to complain the most this time. Well, the joke's on you, gamers, because Capcom went and did something crazy. They released a game that isn't broken and everyone loves. Just beat the game in the morning, gotta thank God. I don't know, the Reddit seems kinda odd. No barking at the devs in no threads. And Twitter didn't ban any death threats. YouTube comments won't be calling me names. I can't believe someone made a good game. But this isn't a review of Resident Evil Village. This is a review of what it's like to live with someone who plays one of the best dang games you could ever watch someone else play. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. All right, you guys, we're not gonna talk about major plot points or show boss fights, but there might be some other stuff you may consider spoilers. Resident Evil Village quickly became my favorite in the series because as a backseat gamer, it's roller coaster pacing through a carnival of sideshows made me want to stay strapped into that backseat for the whole ride. What's wrong? I got scared. What do you mean? Yet despite each of the main attractions going totally off the rails, it was always the main plot that took us there on a single, easy to follow track. The one track mind of Ethan Winters. I want my baby back, baby back, baby back. That's right. Ethan's only motive for this entire game can be summed up in a jingle to sell ribs. I want my baby back, please. Barbecue sauce. The village itself is really just a hub area connecting the four different creature features that Ethan's gotta shoot through until he reaches the boss and says, I would like to see the baby. Unless it's that one part. I no longer want to see the baby. I do not want to see the baby. <laughs> I would like you to put the baby away. The reason this simplistic narrative structure and amusement park inspired world design worked so well for me is that sometimes I just wanna be stupid. I don't wanna think about it, Drake. Why is your wife yelling at us? Kratos, hug your son already, my God. God, and Joel, don't say it. Don't you dare say it, Joel. And I sure as hell ain't your dad. Ah! Why are video games so sad now? Resident Evil Village is more like me. Fun and very stupid. <laughs> don't. She just farted. <laughs> No. She just farted, it came right out of her butt. But hold on, hold on. It's supposed to be stupid. Therefore, it's actually pretty smart. Because it seems today that no matter how ridiculous a developer's gameplay gets, for example, fighting robot dinosaurs with arrows, they still demand to be taken seriously by exploring the human condition and making us depressed. I'll kill myself. That's great. But I like Capcom because copious cleavage. Whoa, sorry. When they drop a trailer, Titanic. Hot -haws. <clears throat> Excuse me. When they drop a trailer with some super-sized slobberknuckers, it's their way of sending a message that says, Daddy, chill. It's all the devs out here trying to be grown-ups. What the hell is even that? If The Last of Us is Michelangelo's David, well, Resident Evil is Michelangelo from Ninja Turtles. He's the stupidest one, but you know what? He has the most fun. So don't be mad I'm calling this game stupid. Shh, shh, shh. It's okay to like stupid things. Shh. There's a propeller with legs. Shh. And there's no stupider vessel to deliver Capcom's campy self-awareness than Ethan Winters. Ethan is a wonderful husband, an even better father, and bless his heart, he's dumber than Leon. Maybe they're out? Yeah, maybe they're out, Ethan. Maybe they're yeah, out. Maybe they're not home, Ethan. Maybe they're running errands, Ethan. Maybe they went out to get a floor. new couch. He has no brains. This is his literal character model. There's nothing in there. If I only had a brain, I'd unravel every riddle for any individual. 
in trouble or in pain. His hilarious plan for escaping a burning building is to search for the key to a rusty 50-year-old truck with no doors, and if by some miracle this thing works and has gas, his plan, again, for escaping a burning building, is to get in a car accident. What are you thinking? It doesn't work, but I'm really glad he did that. Twice. And would have done it again if a lady didn't ask him to please stop crashing. There's a normal way out of here. If I only had a brain. God damn it! Don't get me wrong, this make it up as he goes along attitude is why Ethan is such a lovable horror protagonist in a very similar way to Ash Williams. Groovy. They're both bad slow thinkers, good fast thinkers, and totally incompetent at basically everything except kicking evil's ass. Unlike the other jacked up Backstreet Boys in this series, Ethan is pretty much just a regular type guy with a lot of balls. He can't backflip a head off or punch a boulder out of the way, but he can reattach his hand and sleeve, no big deal whatever. His cheesy knucklehead reactions to moments like this are where Village gets most of its personality. I caught myself a big one. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, yes, it's a freaky nightmare. Yes, there's a poop in your pants. Oh god, he's alive, oh, Jesus. God. But Ethan brings a determination and levity to the situation that's as comforting as it is eye-rolling. Like a dad trying to make his daughter laugh instead of cry. And it's working, but dad! I can't stop this feeling deep inside of me. All right, now that I've explained how the pacing, tone, and leading man produce an excellent game to watch, I lastly need to mention the gameplay. A game's gameplay is something that can make or break the backseat experience. It doesn't matter how awesome the combat is or how epic the next cutscene is going to be, if I have to constantly wait for my boyfriend to follow that bird to a headband he's not even gonna try on. Bird, where are you? The truly amazing thing about Resident Evil Village is that it never made me feel like I didn't belong in the room. All the tension of hiding from Big Mommy. I think she's gone away. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> All the satisfaction of acquiring a helpful new item. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh wow. Thanks for the zoom in, Capcom. <laughs> <laughs> if someone is six inches away, but I'm five inches away, I can press this. <laughs> All the jump scares. Oh, oh Jesus, God. I knew it. All the ammo counting during dicey encounters. And even all the cooking, upgrades, and resource management were moments I felt genuinely a part of rather than witness to. What are you buying? <laughs> <gasps> he said the thing! He said it! And that feeling was never diluted by extraneous side quests unrelated to the story, pull up a minute 600 miles in the opposite direction to grab a useless collectible, or an entire weekend of grinding diarrhea Christmas lights to forge better gear. Every optional area we looted was to recover from what just happened or to prepare for what comes next. And still, these brief expeditions between story beats had the courtesy of keeping me deeply involved with hair-raising surprises, esoteric lore, and intriguing puzzles to help solve no controller necessary. In conclusion, Resident Evil Village may not be a two-player game, but it is a single-player roller coaster with a very special spot for backseat gamers right up front. You know what else is a roller coaster of love? Making a website with Squarespace. You guys know we love Squarespace for how easy they make it to set up a professional looking site for anything your heart could desire. But they also have tons of features that make them the best. The templates are stunning and there's something there for everyone. You can generate revenue and give your customers some exclusive perks with members only content. Squarespace will also give you the lowdown with integrated analytics. Gain insight into the top traffic sources, products, device types, browsers, and more. Give people a personal look into what you do by embedding videos. Connect your social media accounts so customers can get even more info. And best of all, take advantage of Squarespace extensions, new third-party tools that can help you manage inventory, promote products, streamline bookkeeping, reconcile and file sales tax, and ship items across the globe. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch your site, go to squarespace.com slash girlfriend reviews to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this and thank you guys for checking out our sponsors, which makes them want to sponsor us more.